Hey guys, today we're gonna learn the science behind these things, fidget spinners. In case you haven't seen these things literally everywhere, there are these little boomerang shaped toys with a ball bearing in the center that allows them to spin. And they're supposed to help kids with ADHD and autism, or just help you focus. Now kids have been going crazy over these things, and some schools have outright banned them. However, today I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna focus on the physics behind these things and why they spin the way that they do. Like I said earlier, the most important bit of this whole thing is the central ball of bearing, which acts to reduce friction. And I originally thought that it did this by reducing the amount of contact between the two pieces of metal. But then I realized this can't be true. Think about it. If you put a car in neutral, you can push it pretty easily with just a few people. But if you put the car in park, preventing the wheels from moving, then it gets a lot harder to push it. And in both instances, the same mass of the car is distributed over the same area. It's just the type of movement that changes. If those fidget spinners didn't have those central ball bearings, but instead just had two pieces of metal or plastic that rubbed up against each other, then they would experience the force of friction. More specifically, kinetic or sliding friction. If you look at objects up close, we see that they have all these little tiny peaks and valleys. And when two objects rub up against each other, those peaks and valleys get caught on each other. And this creates friction. And the force of this friction can counteract momentum and slow down objects. But this isn't very ideal, especially when we want to carry very heavy loads. So in those cases, we take advantage of rolling. Now, unlike sliding, wheels should never, in theory, rub up against the road. Instead, just a small portion of the wheel is holding up the entire mass until it rotates slightly, leaving another portion of the wheel holding up the entire mass. So in theory, once you start rolling a wheel, it should continue rolling on forever and forever, as long as that wheel is perfectly rigid and it's rolling on an equally rigid road, which of course is impossible. We don't live in a perfect world. In the case of a car driving on a dirt road, that tire slightly deforms that road, which releases a bit of energy. Or those tires might even slip, creating rolling friction, which we know is far from ideal. And collectively, all these factors that inhibit that pure rolling motion are known as rolling resistance, or rolling friction. Which, by the way, is a horrible name, as most forms of rolling friction are not even friction. But if we go back to our ball bearing example, we see that we have smooth metal balls coming in contact with smooth metal rings. And this does a really, really good job at reducing a lot of that rolling resistance. But again, perfect frictionless bearings just don't exist. And the factors that I gave that contribute to rolling resistance barely scratch the surface. So keep an eye out for a follow-up video where I'll go more in depth into that. So now we know that the bearings reduce friction. But why does the spinner shape the way that it is? Well, if we spin the inside part of the bearing, we see that it spins for one or two seconds. But if we spin the outside with the same exact amount of force, we see that it spins for much, much longer. And this is all thanks to our good old friend, angular momentum. As you may know, angular momentum equals angular velocity times moment of inertia. So in that previous example, the angular velocity, which is pretty much the speed that we spin the spinner, was about the same. So it has to be the moment of inertia that changes. Moment of inertia equals mass times radius squared. So by having those little arms go out, that means that we get extra radius. And by having those extra bearings at the ends, that means that we also have more mass, meaning that the outer part of the spinner has a lot more angular momentum than the inside part. And this is what allows it to spin what seems like forever. So now we know why these fidget spinners spin the way that they do. But it turns out that there's a lot more physics in these things. I'll let Alex from Technicality tell you a little bit more. Hey Chase, did you know you could actually learn a lot about gyroscopic precession from a fidget spinner? Or why a spinning fidget spinner actually kind of feels hard to rotate? So if you want to learn more about gyroscopic precession and how it relates to these fidget spinners, then go check out Alex's video. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, such as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. Thanks.